Hey kids, it's Mr. Mr. Fly here, and wow, am I excited today because at long last I get to ride for the first time ever a Harley Davidson. Here I am on board this beautiful machine. It's called the Breakout, and it's an absolute beast. So if you want to know what I think about it, stick around and stay tuned. I'll give you my first impressions review. Okay, so this is a big day for me because uh, I just, for some reason, Harley Davidsons have passed me by and I've never actually ridden one until today. Now I've been riding on this stint for about 10 years and uh, I've ridden all sorts of bikes, as you may know if you've watched other things on my channel. And uh, Harley is the one major manufacturer that I've never ridden before. I don't know why that is, I've got absolutely nothing against Harley, I'm not one of those Harley haters. I love all motorbikes. So I'm really chuffed to have a go on one today. The reason why I'm riding it is because uh, I had to take my Speed Twin into uh, Watford Triumph uh, for its first service. It's for its first annual service, I should say. And uh, there is now a Harley dealer right next door. So it just seemed too good an opportunity to miss to go there and not have a go on a Harley. So he spoke to the salesman there, Cameron, very friendly guy. He was more than happy to let me have a ride of any of the bikes that they've got on demo there. So uh, do go and check them out if you're in the Watford area got amazing selection of bikes anyway back to this one as I say this is called the breakout and uh, this is the uh, well it's just a beautiful looking bike uh, that Harley describe on their website as a sort of a cruising chopper so it's got a really raked out front end as you can see uh, so I was a little bit intimidated about how it would handle but actually it goes around corners okay it's a little bit odd it's got a really fat back tire as I'll show you when I do the walk around so the handling is a little bit unusual but it's not terrible by any means now I, I'm not a fan of feet forward riding and of course this is a feet forward bike so that is what I'm finding more confusing there are a few things that you have to recalibrate yourself for when you jump on a Harley it, tra it transpires first thing <laughs> once you got used to the feet forward thing is the indicators it's a bit like old BMWs look you've got a button on the left for the left indicator and a button on the right for the right indicator when it works, you just have to reprogram your brain. So basically you press it to select the indicator, you press it again to cancel it, or if you forget, then it does auto-cancel apparently. So you really do have to manhandle it around to make it lean over and go around these corners. So riding position then, I'll go through all the usual stuff. Riding position, as you imagine, sat bolt upright, really, really wide, chopper-esque handlebars on here. Comfortable riding position, legs splayed out the front, feet down there look massive brake pedal massive gear lever lovely color this one as well so yeah riding position is really comfortable actually it reminds me very much of the rocket 3 that I rode a few months back you are sat bolt upright the seat is nice and sculpted but it feels quite hard I think over time in my case I would probably um, that might upset my back just because all your weight is on your coccyx as opposed to lent forward on the pegs on a more conventional bike but yeah the riding position is, is very nice if you if you ride cruisers then this will feel this will feel beautiful to you so i picked this up from the dealer in watford i don't know watford at all well so i've come out of watford headed up the m1 gave the bike a bit of a try up there and i just wanted to sort of settle into the bike before i got talking to the camera so here i am now in hemel Hempstead, which is an area i know a little bit better and i can get to try the uh, bike on some uh, more country roads having now tried it on the motorway and of course through town both uh, Hemel and Watford are busy places but through town no problem at all in fact I did a bit of filtering in Watford that showed how, uh, how confident I was feeling and the reason I was intimidated to get on the bike is because it's uh, this bike weighs something well it's over 300 kilograms I'll, as I say I'll go through the spec uh, and that's a heavy bike by anyone's uh, calculation but you sit so low down on it your feet get such a good purchase on the ground it's not intimidating at all in that respect more intimidating is probably the uh, Milwaukee 8 engine it's a big old V2 and 114 cubic inches as our American cousins like to do and that translates to I think it's uh, 1.8 actually or well, 1863 cc so 1.8 litre bike plus and he puts out something like 94 brake horsepower though and as is often the case with these sort of bikes it's all about the torque on here when you wind it on 
it absolutely flies. I won't demonstrate it here in a 30 mile an hour zone, but up the M1 just now, the thing absolutely rocketed on. So the engine then has got loads of shove and it sounds absolutely beautiful as well, purring away. The other big difference between this bike and any other that I've ever ridden before is that it feels properly well how can I describe it it's a man's bike I'm gonna get I'm gonna get criticized now for saying that because I'm sure plenty of women ride Harleys perfectly successfully but the thing you can feel every thump and vibe in it is built by blokes with spanners with uh, sweaty armpits and rolled up sleeves and tattoos you can feel that hammers and spanners have been used in the construction of this come on then lady oh hello Gosh, where was I? Yes, um, yeah, you can feel absolutely every bit of engineering as it's happening in this bike. You can literally, when you're at slow speeds, it, it feels like you can feel each piston thumping up and down in that big V-twin. And there are massive vibes in the handlebars as well. The mirrors vibrate away. It is a much more raw and visceral feeling than any other European or Japanese bike I've ever been on. If I was unkind, I would say it doesn't feel very refined. But I think that's that's what the appeal is about Harley's, isn't it? That it feels, you know, properly masculine. And again, I'll probably get criticised for that. But I hope you understand the point I'm, I'm trying to make. Everything about it is big and brash and American. The gearbox, massively clunky. And again, you have to give the uh, gear lever a big old kick and you get a big clunk when it goes into gear. The brake levers are just bigger and wider than any brake levers I've ever felt on a bike before. The handlebars are wider than any I've felt before. But all that adds to its character and that's what these bikes are all about. If you want a comfortable bike to commute to work every day, you don't buy yourself an 18,000 Harley Davidson. 18,000 pounds I should say Harley Davidson because that's how much one of these will cost you there or thereabouts. From an engineering point of view, it is relatively simple. There are no electronics on this to help you out. There's uh, Obviously there's ABS if it's Euro 4 compliant, which has to be to be sold in the UK then. Of course it's got ABS, but other than that, that's it. There's no riding modes, there's no keyless ignition. It doesn't look like the fuel cap's even lockable. <laughs> and the bike is none the worse for that, I have to say. What I do like is this little LCD display here, hope you can see that okay. It's actually quite hard to read. It's sort of grey letters on a black background, but just built into the width of the handlebar clamp. That is all your instrumentation, and then your idiot lights below. But that's all you need. It's got your speed, it's got a fuel gauge, it's got uh, what gear you're in, and an odometer, and that's it. What else do you need? And I think that looks really cool. It feels properly, solidly built. And everything about it, actually, makes you want to ride in a lazy manner although it can go very fast i just went up the m1 i did 80 miles now and it no problem at all it's got loads more to give but you start to get a lot of wind blasts at speeds above that and anyway it's illegal but where this bike comes into its own is doing like at the moment like i'm doing 32 miles an hour and it's just lolloping along and it feels great and i've got a big grin on my face that's what these bikes are all about what i'd love to do is lose some of this traffic so I could just do things like test the brakes and stuff. But in the meantime, the suspension on this it is adjustable. This has got what Harley referred to as a soft tail. So although it looks like it's a, it has no suspension at the rear, it has got a monoshock at the back, a bit like the Triumph Bobber. And it's adjustable as well, the suspension on here. And it feels okay, I have to say. On this road, it's, uh, it's, it's actually not soft. It, I would have thought that the suspension on here would have been set on the soft side, but actually it's... Uh, if anything, it's on the hard side, but you can adjust that obviously to uh, account for your, your weight or whatever. It's not unpleasant by any means. When you come to a stop, look, feet planted, legs bent, you ain't going to drop this. Look at the size of that brake pedal, absolutely brilliant. Let's just weave past here a bit. Almost missed an opportunity there. Still not quite used to getting my feet forward onto those pegs, but. Uh, that's just a matter of getting used to it. So yeah, handling wise, you do have to muscle it around the corners, of course. Raked out front end, massive section rear tyre. But you just ride accordingly.
Okay, so nothing behind me now. Let's just test that front brake. Okay, front brake is a bit weedy to be honest. Take some stop in this bike, and it's only got a single disc on the front, which is a bit strange. Let me just try the rear brake as I come up to the speed camera. Actually, the rear brake is very, very good. So yeah, rear brake better than I thought. Front brake not as good as it perhaps should be. Let's just slow down a bit here. Right, what I'm hoping to do is to pick up one of my uh, usual little test routes that I haven't ridden for ages actually around here. But it takes in all sorts of roads and it'll give me a good chance to do the walk around as well. I can't wait to show you what this bike looks like. No matter what you think about Harley's ride, you can't argue with the looks. They look absolutely amazing, at least to my eyes they do. Maybe it's because I'm getting old. But it really is a work of art, this particular bike. The gearbox on here, as I say, very positive. You know when you've got it in gear or not. There's a big clump when the gear is engaged. The clutch, not that light, but you know, it works fine. It does make you work a bit, this bike. There's nothing about it that's, uh, you know, it's not doing anything for you. Well, I'm just waiting to get up to uh, one of the other roads I'm looking for. The switch gear, let's talk about that. I have to say, I love the switch gear on here. It's proper switch gear, proper switches again. You can feel when they've been engaged. It's none of that, uh, printed circuit board stuff. Proper switch gear that works, I like that. The mirrors on here, really short stems, and I think they look great as a result. And because the handlebars are so wide, you can see out the back no problem at all. And although they do vibrate a little bit, it's not to the point that, you know, that they're so blurry you can't see. You can see out the back absolutely fine. But these sort of sweepy B roads is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, you can ride all day like this. I definitely get why people like these. It's just a nice way to uh, nice way to get around. Okay, I need to find my uh, left turn up here somewhere. Is this it? Uh, I don't know if it is actually. But let's go down here and see what happens. Okay, so this is uh, Ash Ridge now, which is a lovely. National Trust owned area. Lots of walks and things through here. A bit of gravel on the ground, I've got to be a bit careful. But nice place to come. And again, a good uh, chance to test the bike on these sort of back roads as opposed to the urban stuff that I've been riding on. This display, well, it's really neat and I like it. It's quite hard to read actually. Particularly if the sun's behind you, it's got a glossy screen on it and that can obliterate it. At the moment, it looks fine. Yeah, I'm liking this. All right, what I need to do is find a suitable place to pull over and uh, show you around this bike and talk you through the spec in the usual way. Is there somewhere here to stop? Uh, maybe not. So I'm heading up towards Ivinghoe Beacon now. This is, again, a lovely spot. don't really know where I am at this point, but it's all in the right direction. What a beautiful day for it, eh? Right, is there a little spot there I can... Yeah, I think we could just sneak on the edge there. Let's just pop her over here. Well, I don't think I'm in anyone's way. It's fine, neutral, he says, as he's in the way of a car. <laughs> Stands easy to get down and kill her. There we go, and this does actually, having said it doesn't have much in the way of electronics, it does actually have keyless condition, so I've got the uh, key fob in my pocket. But interesting that that doesn't appear to be, maybe it is lockable on the fob, who knows. Anyway, here we go, the uh, the Harley-Davidson Breakout 2020 model. What an absolutely beautiful beast, isn't she? Lovely colour this one as well, and there's that incredible engine. Anyway, let me get the phone out, and I'll uh, or the other camera, and I'll take you through the spec in the usual way. Okay, there she is then, the... Uh Harley Davidson breakout. Let's just show you a close up of that engine. Absolute beauty. I can see why people spend hours polishing those things. Doesn't that look beautiful? 114 cubic inches, as you can clearly see, and that works out at 1868 cc. Puts at 93 horsepower at 5030 rpm, so nice and low. Um, and it's, uh, as I say, it's all about the torque on these things 155 newton meters of torque at 3000 rpm. There's that massive fat tyre. And it's uh, belt driven. Look, I don't know why more bikes aren't belt driven, it just makes a lot of sense to me. Um, don't know much about the brakes on this, as I say, it's got this single disc on here. It's a uh, badged Harley Davidson and it's, uh, it's a four pot caliper on there. Don't know what size that disc is, it looks quite small. Uh, on the back, it's just a two pot on the other side. 
as well, another Harley Davidson caliper, no doubt, yeah, there we go, stuck in there. Um, so the back works better than the front, as I say. Suspension, this is what uh, Harley describe as a soft tail frame, as I said earlier, and uh, it is adjustable suspension via that adjuster just there, but the mono shock sits inside that housing somewhere. Okay, seat height on here, uh, a nice and low 665mm seat, possibly the lowest seat I've ever, I've ever ridden with, and that uh, fuel tank there, 3.5 gallons, that's 13.2 uh, litres, and it's got a claim 42 miles per gallon, but it doesn't look very big, so I'm not sure what sort of range you get out of that. Uh, electronics, as I said, not a lot, um, just that little um, 2.1 inch LCD screen that I talked about earlier, which is really cool actually, um, and then uh, of course it's got ABS, but that's, that's about it. And uh, price-wise, according to the Harley Davidson website, these start at uh, £18,885. It goes up to £19,995, so twenty grand, depending on the colour you have. Uh, this one's actually in Zephyr Blue and Black Sun Glow, would you believe? Who comes up with these uh, names for the colours? Black Sun Glow, I don't know. Anyway, it looks really, really nice. Okay, there we go. There's not really much more to uh, tell you about on the spec. As I say, fairly sort of basic bike, but uh, in terms of spec, but... It looks absolutely beautiful, doesn't it? Look at that LED light, actually. That's some fancy electronics right there. And just beautifully made. Indicators hanging off the handlebars there. Those little stubby mirrors that I talked about. And that beautiful paint scheme. Really nice. All right. Let's jump on and ride us some more. Well, what a fantastic way to start my Harley-Davidson career. To break my Harley-Davidson duck, as it were. Now, how do we start this? Uh, that one. I just love the thump it gives you. Right, nothing behind me. Doesn't help that I'm on the wrong side of the road here. And he's off. So that is it, my uh, Harley Davidson Cherry, well and truly popped. It's been absolutely great to ride this beautiful bike. And I must just say a huge thank you to uh, Harley Davidson in Watford and to Cameron, the sales guy there. Lovely showroom up there, as all Harley Davidson showrooms are. Go and check them out if you're in the area. It's a bugger to find, I have to say, but uh, <laughs> once you're there, uh, not only, of course, if you've got the Harley uh, shop, but you've got the shop one next door as well. So what are my conclusions and summary then of my first Harley Davidson ride? Well, I've really loved it. I mean, you've got to take these sort of bikes for what they are. They're intended as playthings. They're not necessarily intended as practical forms of transport. Yes, it vibrates. No, it doesn't have a lot of fancy electronics. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's got a lot of chrome to polish. But that's all part of the joy, isn't it? I entirely get why people like these things. But to me, it's very much a toy, and an expensive toy like that at 20 grand, as I say, or slightly less, depending on the color you get. But not really anything to not like about the bike, given the type of bike it is. I mean, you either get on with the feet forward, sat bolt upright position or you don't personally on a long ride i don't get on with that but for short blasts and cruises for up to an hour the sort of thing you're likely to do on a sunday afternoon on one of these if you're a harley owner then absolutely brilliant everything else about it i love i love this little display the mirrors work well it looks beautiful it sounds beautiful it's a work of art it feels properly mechanical i really love it and i guess overall the thing is it gives you a big beaming grin on the inside of your helmet and that's what uh, motorcycling is all about isn't it that's the most important thing so there we are i hope you've enjoyed that at least half as much as i have it's been an absolute cracking ride out today i've got the work cut out now finding getting back to watford <laughs> and finding where to take this back otherwise i think i've stolen it but uh, thanks very much for watching if it's the first time you've been to the channel do consider subscribing it would be great to have you along next time until then this has been the Mr. Fly. Cheerio.